to the Upcycle Canada podcast. I'm Jennifer, and together with my husband Dave, we started with an idea, worked on it as a side hustle, and grew it into our our first eco-friendly store. At Upcycle Canada, we repurpose, refinish, and reuse discarded items, giving them new life. Sit in on the conversation as we continue to grow from a small side hustle into something much more. Special guests will drop by and share their journey with you as well. This is the most eco-friendly small business podcast in your favorites. This is Upcycle Canada, where yesterday's items are reborn. Let's do this. Hey, welcome back to the Upcycle Canada podcast. Dave here with you. Jen's at work. But I thought I'd come on here and share with you an idea, something to share with your kids. Wow. Hey, how about five practical eco-friendly lessons? For kids, yes, something you as a parent can do to instill in your kids how important it is to be eco-friendly, upcycle, repurpose, all that great stuff. Let's cue the kids. Well, there you go. Okay, so five things. Everyone settle down. We're going to be talking about five practical eco-friendly lessons for kids. Here we go on the Upcycle Canada podcast. Excited to do this. Are you ready? Here we go. Pay attention. Follow along. And uh, for those taking notes at home, everything's included in the show notes as well. So there you go. A freebie. So here we go. Number one, reduce, reuse, recycle. We had that painted in our store up on the wall at the Upcycle Canada store. We want and we would love to encourage kids to realize the importance of reducing waste, recycling materials, that's just normal everyday waste we have in our home, our paper, our plastic, our glass. And let's encourage our kids to use these reusable items like a water bottle or a cloth shopping bag. And let's figure out ways that we can encourage them to understand that it's more than just taking the garbage to the curb, but what can we do in our home to reduce, reuse, and recycle, and have that conversation. Why go out and buy a a holder for your pens when that mayonnaise jar or that peanut butter jar can be cleaned out and reused, even redecorated? Come on. This is something we can do as a family, is reduce, reuse, and recycle. It starts in our home. It really, really does. So that's number one. Number two, conserving energy. Mm. Now, Jen's dad was an electrician and he would be on his kid's case for leaving lights on, for doing things that wasted electricity, uh, maybe doing the laundry at prime time when costs are higher instead of doing them after hours. Conserve energy. Teach our kids, and this is one thing we can do as parents, is teach your kids to turn the lights off when they're not in use. Unplugging their electronics and using natural light whenever possible. I know there's teenagers that are going to hate this, but open those blinds. Let some sunlight in, people. Uh, (laughs) Explain the benefits of saving energy and reducing our carbon footprint. Okay? This is something that we can have a conversation about. What is a carbon footprint? How how can we take steps in what we do every day to reduce that? And we know there's people who are the opposite and fly around the world and spend money like it's going out of style. And we think, well, what's what are we going to do on our end? It's still our responsibility to demonstrate to our children that we can have a positive impact on our environment by conserving energy. If we don't need as much, it's going to save money. Hey, kids, we're going to save money on energy and take that money and either donate it or go on a holiday as a family. And let's work towards conserving energy. Number three, saving water. Okay. Teaching our kids to conserve water by turning off faucets when they're brushing their teeth, taking shorter showers. I know my kids would take... (laughs) They would take really long showers. I'm like, what the heck, man? Uh, And using uh, a watering can instead of a hose for our plants. Little things like this. Ways that we 
can use less water. Again, it's going to save us money in our homes. And I know we have uh, families that live on wells. And they are always watching their water pressure and, and trying to reduce as much as possible as far as saving water. So what can we do? Let's talk about our kids and talk to our kids about it. And let's explain to them how their simple little actions combined together make a big difference. Let's save some water. Think about how you can do that as a family, how you can raise that up and how you can have a, make it a game. Figure out the best way to save water and how much water did we save. And then even show them when you get your statements. If, you get, if you're paying for your water through your city, show them the before and the after. and Show them the, re, re, the reaction and the reaction of what, what their efforts are doing as far as saving and conserving water. Number four, su- support any type of sustainable transportation. Okay, so encourage walking, biking using public transportation when feasible, explain the environmental benefits of reducing car usage and air pollution. Maybe it's simple as just getting on a bus with your kids and going for a ride on the bus. They might think, especially when they're little, they might think this is the coolest thing ever, that they got to ride on one of those city buses that goes zooming by all the time. Explain to them that we don't always need to use the car. We don't always need to drive you to the corner store, which is one bike ride away. We have these great tools and things in our our home that can save money and reduce the reliance on our vehicles all the time. We moved close to our kids' future schools so that they could walk to school. And yet, (laughs) they would get up late and ask for rides. So... There we go. As parents, we have to kind of demonstrate, hey, listen, this is your responsibility to get to school, your responsibility to get to your event. You're close to it. That's why we live here, to make it easy for you. So less less reliance on vehicles, more reliance on you. Maybe that's something we can demonstrate in our home. And lastly, number five, what about just appreciating nature? Spending some time in nature with the kids maybe gardening in, around your home, make your home beautiful, planting some vegetables and fruits, maybe in your home if that's possible. Teach them about growing food and the importance of biodiversity. And maybe some of that food waste that would normally go in the garbage can and be picked up by that truck every week could be repurposed in a way to help grow your food. Foster a love for nature and a sense of our responsibility as humans as citizens in our community towards the environment around us. Again, we talk about this many, many times that it seems like our efforts are so small in comparison to the need. But imagine if everyone did little things, how if we combined a lot of little things together, the impact that it would have on our world. So five things. Let's do it again. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That was number one. What can we do in our home to reduce what goes out to the curb? Number two, conserving our energy. Number three, save some water. How can you do that? Figure out a way. Four, support sustainable transportation. Hop on the bus, take it down to the downtown park and go play at the park and take the bus back. And the car sits in the driveway. Awesome. And number five, appreciate nature. Give your kids the opportunity to see how they're, the impact of what they do and what it has on the world around us. On those little nature walks, bring a bag, pick up some litter as you go. Don't step over it, but clean up as you go. As all of us make a little effort here and there, I think it's going to demonstrate something unique to our children, where it will become their default setting to do something positive for the environment instead of negative. It's not going to take a politician It's not going to take a tax. It's not going to take a rule or a law to make us effective as parents in teaching our kids how to be good stewards of the environment around us. It takes us as parents demonstrating it on a regular basis. And that's what we can do. So by focusing on these practical, eco-friendly lessons, you can help instill important values and behaviors in your children, shaping them 
into environmentally conscious adults. It starts today in one little way, multiplied many, many times. We can have that impact on our kids. And that is something I really hope that we can demonstrate. And what, why we do what we do at Upcycle Canada is we want to see and give practical examples of how something has outlived its lifetime, no longer usable in its former uh, purpose. And now we get it and we turn it into something else and extend the lifetime of that material and give it a new life. That's why we do Upcycle Canada. And that's why we love meeting with amazing people like you've heard on this podcast who demonstrate repurposing and demonstrate being creative. And again, it might seem like a bunch of small things where no one's doing huge, grandiose things to save the planet. But we want to feature those people here on the podcast who are making steps, no matter how big or how small their attempts. We're all on the same journey to create space and to create awareness on how to be more eco-friendly. So if you know somebody that is doing this in their world, and you would love to have them highlighted here on the Upcycle Canada podcast, I would love to meet with them. I would love to invite them onto the show and throw the spotlight on what they're doing in their space to be more eco-friendly. And I would love to reach out to them and love to have them on the show. So if you know them, share this episode with them, let them know about Upcycle Canada, and let them know about our curiosity about having them on our show. We'd love to have that. More episodes coming up soon. Jen and I are still busy working through all the details of moving out of our store environment where we were for three years and that journey coming to a close. And now we're in a, a new place at a market on Sundays in, in Niagara every Sunday. Uh, so we're kind of working through the process of what's next for Upcycle Canada from a retail perspective. We have done some shows, some amazing events around our area where we live, and we're looking to grow and continue to grow and to continue to be here with you. So I know it's been a little while since we've been out, and that's why I'm talking here at the end, because you're our, our best friend for listening this far. And I just want to let you know we've got more stuff coming. Jen and I are working through our calendar to make sure we can do this on a regular basis together. But I didn't want to leave you hanging. I didn't want to leave you waiting and wondering, where is Dave? Where is Jen? We're here. We're good. Uh, lots of stuff going on in our family. Lots of stuff going on with Upcycle Canada. But we wanted to connect with you again and just let you know we're here. We're doing good and we miss you. And we're looking forward to having more conversations with you coming up soon. So again, upcyclecanada.ca is the website. Go there and follow us there as well. You can check us out on our social media. Everything is found through upcyclecanada.ca. And I'd love to hear from you. There's a little speak pipe icon on our website. You can click that and leave us a voice message. We'll bring your voice right here into the podcast. And you can share what you're doing and your tips on being eco-friendly and how you repurpose, reuse, and recycle. Thanks for listening to the Upcycle Canada podcast. We'll talk soon. Jen will be back with me soon, and we'll be back on the mic and sharing more great stories about Upcycle Canada and our friends who do something similar to what we do. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk soon. Have a great day, and get out there and demonstrate to your kids how they can change the world one small task at a time. This has been the Upcycle Canada podcast. Thanks for listening today. We appreciate your feedback and would love to connect with you. Email your questions, comments, or suggestions to upcyclecanadapodcast at gmail.com. To find out more about our business and access links to all our social media sites, podcast notes, and more, please visit upcyclecanada.ca. A review of this episode on the podcast app of your choice is always appreciated. Please help us build this community by sharing our podcast with your family and friends. Our thanks to Jacob Moon for the instrumental backing track used in this podcast. Please visit jacobmoon.com for more on this talented Canadian artist. Join us again for more great topics, ideas, and practical steps to help you in your daily life. Thank you for listening. Let's keep this conversation going.
Hey, this is Dave. You're like, what's this music? I thought the podcast was over. Well, it is. This is actually an ad. Oh, you're like an ad. Hmm. But this is different. This is for another podcast called, ready? Dad Space. Dad Space is a podcast created for dads by dads. Head over to dadspace.ca for all the information. And we would love, if you know a dad, if you are a dad, if you've ever had a dad, if you know a new dad, a current dad, a empty nest dad, We have a podcast just for dads, and I'd love to share with you and to share it with a special dad in your life, dadspace.ca. Thank you for listening to the podcast you've already been listening to. But if you want a little bit more podcasting greatness, check out dadspace.ca, dadspace.ca, for all the goodness for your favorite dad. Aww. It's like a Father's Day present every day. We'll see you over at dadspace.ca. Thanks for listening to all of our podcasts. And we'll talk soon. This is Dave. And I'll meet you at dadspace.ca. Cheers. And now we dance.